Oh well, it's time to go for a ride this morning. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. What's it gonna be? Ah, the tiger. You know what? She's not coming with me this morning. I could take the Bonneville out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but I, uh, I did fix the brakes on this one. Hmm. Well, what's it going to be? Oh yeah, that's right. Well, good morning YouTube. Arizona RE. And yep, I'm back on the infield. Got the uh, front brake back on and uh, thanks to Hitchcox of England. Just holy cow, man. So, a, kind of a bummer, a turn of events for Royal Enfield in North America it, I, I don't know what they're doing but they're they're really letting some things lapse here so these older iron barrels which are built more like the uh, 1955 bu bullet uh, they still have the twin leading drum brakes up front and they're notoriously weak brake on this bike so you know no big surprise there but That's a notoriously weak front brake, but more than that is that the brake pads were have been dwindling down for quite some time. So back in, oh, what was it? November of last year, I went to the local infield dealership, uh, scoot over here in Tucson, and asked them to order me some parts. Yeah, I wanted the new springs. I wanted the new... I was going to basically just rebuild the whole brakes. It only cost $15 more to get the extra hardware. And, uh, you know, when it comes to front brake, you might as well, right? Road works on a Sunday. Look at that. So... The problem is, is that um, Enfield now... Royal Enfield has stopped using Cycle Motor Works as their North American as their North American distributor. And as a result, uh, they were, you know, they they just weren't stocking the parts for Royal Enfield anymore for the Royal Enfield dealerships. So January went by and I still had not received the parts from from Royal Enfield at the dealer, scoot over. Then it turns out that uh, Royal Enfield North America, as it's been founded, they've opened a headquarter now in uh, 
They've opened up a headquarters now in uh, Wisconsin. They got a former Harley guy that's uh, helping them with their North American distributorship. So Scoot Over is no longer going to be a, uh, a dealer for Royal Enfield here in Tucson, which is a bummer for me because they really haven't found another suitable uh, uh, dealer dealership to sell them. And uh, they really want to sell the bikes not in scooter shops. They want to sell the bikes in motorcycle shops, which, you know, honestly, when someone's looking for a new bike, unless they're looking for an infield uh, and you put an infield in a shop with a bunch of other bikes, uh, comparatively speaking, performance and everything else, it, a lot of times the infield just won't uh, just won't measure up. Like I said, unless it's an infield you're looking for. So you know, in my opinion, this isn't such a great idea. But more importantly, is that they've they've put Royal Infield in a position where um, there's going to be a lot less dealerships and a lot less market support for guys like me. And uh, so what that means is I, I had to order the brake parts that I wanted and needed because I ended up adjusting the brakes and I over adjusted them, cranked on the trunnion rod, uh, trunnion link rod too much and broke it. Um, and that means that I had to order parts from Hitchcock's, which Hitchcock's is basically they're refurbishing parts all the way from 1955 through uh, the 2000s. And that's that's what I had to find. And bravo to Hitchcock's, man. I really thought buying from England meant that, you know, it was going to come over on the slow boat in the belly of the Titanic or something, and uh, that is just not the case. They had it to my door within a week. So, bravo to Hitchcock's. Hats off to them. Great freaking job, because now it's got me back on my Royal Enfield. And while I was surfing around on the Hitchcock's website there, I saw something that I told myself I would never do. I said I would never, ever, ever do the, uh, the disc brake conversion because it just steals away from the looks of this bike too much. But I got to tell you, with all new hardware, new pads, and while I'm still bedding them in, that's what this morning is, uh, I could tell you this much, the, the pads are... It, it just doesn't offer you the performance of modern braking and unfortunately uh, you know I don't ride the bike I mean you guys see how I ride especially when I'm on the infield man I'm I'm relatively gentle with this bike and, and I'm not pushing any envelopes here but modern traffic modern traffic other than me uh, needs me to be able to stop better Especially on an infield, cars are more apt to pull in front of you because they see how slow you're going and they're, they're positive. They can, uh, they can get in front of you without any issue, which largely they can, but what they don't realize is the, uh, the brakes on this are woefully um, understated. Even in their best form, even when you take the time to deck the shoes and make sure that you're getting full contact, full patch contact, brand new hardware. All the tricks, all the bells and whistles on this thing, as good as I can get it, still doesn't equal even what a drum, br the drum brake on my wife's Nighthawk did. So, um, knowing, I mean, I, man, I've known so many riders here recently that have crashed and have had issues with traffic. And uh, to me, the safety aspect just isn't worth it. So I think here, in the very near future, I'm going to be ordering up the front disc brake conversion kit for this bike, which from the right-hand side, you know, the, the beauty side where the, all the, the pipe is and all that stuff, she'll still look mostly the same. But from the left-hand side, you're going to end up seeing uh, an 8-inch disc brake there. So sorry to have to do it, but I just, I, I, I need better stopping power on this bike. But that's just a quick update on the Royal Enfield. I just wanted to come out here. I'm, I'm betting in the brakes and going, doing a little bit of urban exploration. Uh, just to kind of see what's out here right now. So I'll get with you guys later.